Welcome to the Sent from Disneyland podcast. Here age relives fond memories of the past. If it's your first time joining us, welcome. On this podcast, we'll take a journey into the past and explore Disneyland and Disneyland history with mementos, snapshots, and postcards sent from Disneyland from 1955 to the present. The postcards from this episode will be viewable on Instagram at Sent from Disneyland or on my website, SentFromDisneyland.com. Today I'm starting off by thanking my patrons from Patreon.com. You can join in and receive mail from my desk or from my trips to Disneyland. I'm currently working on some new patron benefits. Patrons can sign up for as little as a dollar per month. Special thanks to Random Olive, the first patron to this podcast, and to the e-ticket patrons to Nia, Eric Daniels, Monica Seats Vega, Joe Gamble, Scott Booker, Russ Romano, Michael and Christina Cross, Mary Henderson, and Sheila Harry. See ticket patrons serious inquiries only, Debbie Weinstein, Jennifer Schneep, Ruby McDowell, Grace Coat, Scott Cagle, and Ben and Noel Bruning, B ticket patron the Disney Rewind Podcast, and to the A ticket patrons, Elise Sharp, Zealot Infinity, Alexis Robles, Maggie and Henry Byers, Angelique and the Block, and the All Aboard Podcast. I am your host, your post host Clocky, and today we have two postcards sent from Disneyland. The front of our first postcard has monorail red, soaring over the waterfall above the submarine lagoon. On the back it reads, America's first daily operating monorail trains transport passengers over a concrete highway in the sky between Disneyland and the Disneyland Hotel on the Disneyland Allweg monorail system. It's postmarked June 30th, 1966, with a Riverside cancel, and although the stamp has been torn off, a four-cent purple Lincoln postage stamp, Scott number 1036. I assume they visit the park on Wednesday, June 29th, when park hours were from 9 a.m. to midnight. The weather was a high of 81 and a low of 62. Park attendance that day was 30,845. It's addressed to Elise Wilkie of Blue Earth, Minnesota. It reads, Thursday, a.m. Hi, having a wonderful time. Beautiful weather to the point I have a beautiful sunburn. Never had anything like it in my life. Monday at 345. David played in Santa Monica, Tuesday, Marineland, Wednesday, Disneyland, today, Knott's Berry Farm, tomorrow, Ed's cousin is here in Riverside, we are staying nights with some friends, leave for home Saturday or Sunday, love, Marie. Tomorrowland saw many changes during the 1960s. In 1960, Disneyland closed two of the Stranger exhibits, the Bathroom of the Future and the Aluminum exhibit. The Crane Bathroom exhibit was replaced with a fun photo location. Later in 1963, The Dutch Boy Color Exhibit was also closed to expand the size of the Circle Vision attraction. Disneyland tried one more exhibit in Tomorrowland, which focused on fashion and fabrics. The monorail had two major changes in the early 60s. First was the debut of the second generation of the monorail, the Mark II, and second was the lengthening of the track to include a stop at the Disneyland Hotel. Looking through some photos online, it's interesting to note that there was a hat bar in Tomorrowland. This stand would eventually be replaced by the Mad Hatter of Tomorrowland, although most of my guidebooks and maps reference the Mad Hatter in Tomorrowland as early as 1960. By the mid-60s, Disneyland began closing attractions and remaining exhibits to prepare for a new Tomorrowland. Monsanto's Hall of Chemistry and the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea exhibit were removed at the end of summer in 1966. One of the last additions to Tomorrowland before the 1968 new Tomorrowland was transplanting the Carousel of Progress from the 1964 New York World's Fair to Disneyland. So many great deals on last Sunday's Enfield Post Instagram sale. Be sure to check back every week for new vintage stamps. I'm bringing some with me on my trip to the park with a glue stick. It definitely helps with using the stamps to mail the postcards. You can head over to EnfieldPost.com and explore all the different vintage stamps you can use on your next card or letter. That's E-N-F-I-E-L-D-P-O-S-T on Instagram and EnfieldPost.com for your wedding and vintage postage needs. Enfield Post is the official postage stamp sponsor of the Sent from Disneyland podcast. The front of our next postcard has the Coca-Cola Tomorrowland Terrace. You can see the Matterhorn, Monorail Red, Monorail Blue, the People Mover, the Skyway, and in the far back you can see It's a Small World. On the back it reads, Tomorrowland Terrace, dining, dancing, and live entertainment in an exciting futuristic atmosphere are the features of climate-controlled Tomorrowland Terrace. A unique ascending stage brings popular bands into the limelight here in Disneyland's Tomorrowland. It's postmarked September 4th, 1968 with an Anaheim cancel and a six-cent Franklin Roosevelt postage stamp, Scott number 
84. I assume they visit the park on Tuesday, September 3rd, when park hours were from 10 a.m. to midnight. The weather was a high of 79 and a low of 61. It's addressed to the Ted Knudsen Seniors of La Crosse, Wisconsin. It reads, Hi. Surprise. Ted is here on business for the week, but we tagged along for pleasure. Took TM and friend here for his birthday. Having a tremendous time. Love, Dolores, Ted, and boys. Much changed with the new Tomorrowland in 1968. As I've mentioned in previous episodes, like 116, Sent on Time, or 33, Set from the House of the Future, large Tomorrowland icons like the World Clock and Monsanto's House of the Future were removed to make way for new attractions. 1968 Tomorrowland saw the addition of the People Mover and Adventures Through Inner Space. The People Mover platform replaced the Flight Circle. The Flight Circle was prominently featured in the Disneyland Around the Seasons episode of The Wonderful World of Color. When a man with a jetpack was shown flying from the flight circle around Sleeping Beauty Castle and back, mostly done with camera tricks. The flying saucer attraction was also removed and replaced with an outdoor performance space. There was not much of a change in food options in the new Tomorrowland. The space bar was still operating and serving sandwiches, fries, and sodas. The yacht bar closed and made room for the Coca-Cola Tomorrowland Terrace. The new location was essentially the yacht bar expanded into a new walk-up service eatery. More windows were added, and the focus of the restaurant was to serve guests watching whatever band or singer was playing on the Tomorrowland Terrace stage. After the major changes of the 1968 Tomorrowland refurbishment, not much changed until the 1970s. This incoming postcard is sponsored by the Art Throwdown. Art Throwdown, or ATD, is an online craft hour on Instagram, starting at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific. Be sure to check out Monday's ATD, which is usually hosted by a paper artist, Russ Romano. I see many amazing art projects, learned about awesome postmarks, postage stamp history, and a lot more on different episodes. It's great to stop in for an hour to watch someone craft or design something unique. Each host brings something a little different to each show. I'll list some of the regular hosts, or you can follow Russ Romano 2021 on Instagram. The front of my incoming postcard has a silhouette of the United States made with a handful of different stamps. On the top of the postcard, it reads, National Postcard Week, May 1st through May 7th, 2022. It's postmarked May 4th, 2022, with a Santa Barbara cancel and a forever Red Barn postcard postage stamp, Scott number 5547. It reads, May 3rd, 2022. Hi, Clocky. Happy National Postcard Week. Thanks for the postcard from Disneyland. I love your design. All the best, Nan. Thank you so much for the postcard, Nan. I really enjoyed all the postcards I got during National Postcard Week. I'm also glad you enjoyed the design for the Disney Nurses Day postcard created for Nurses Day at Disneyland. I'm excited because I've seen a sneak peek of next year's Nurses Day t-shirt design. And now I'm working on the postcard design for Disney Nurses Day 2023. It was so awesome to send out so much mail at the event and to help others with their postcards as well. Thanks for listening to Sent from Disneyland. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and tell your friends. It would be awesome to share your favorite episode. There are over 100 episodes to choose from. It would also help to leave a five-star rating and comment on whatever podcast platform you use. If you'd like to support the show financially, please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash sentfromdisneyland. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at sentfromdisneyland or on Twitter at sentfromdisney. For questions and comments, send me a postcard address to sentfromdisneyland, P.O. Box 44, Hood, California, 95639. This podcast is not affiliated with Disney, the United States Postal Service, or any post office or Disney properties. Opinions expressed on this podcast belong to its host and guest of the Sent from Disneyland podcast.